This is the Laurence Tidal Power Station, located on the estuary of the Rance River in Brittany, France. It was the first tidal barrage system of its kind, and despite being opened over half a century ago, it still produces some of the cheapest energy in Europe today. But since its opening in 1966, only one tidal plant of a similar scale has been built, and the wave of tidal projects some people might have expected to follow simply hasn't materialised. That could be about to change though. Earlier in March of this year, the UK city of Liverpool announced advanced plans for a huge £3.5 billion tidal barrage project across the River Mersey. And although it's still very much in the planning stages, the city have agreed to submit a scoping opinion to the planning inspectorate later this year. It's predicted to have an output capacity of 700 megawatts, meaning should it go through, it will be the most powerful tidal energy project in the world. Not that there's much to compete against. Naturally, it's something that's raised a lot of enthusiasm among long-standing supporters of the technology, and should the project go ahead, it's hoped it could pave the way for future projects in the UK and further afield. Tidal range energy is a form of renewable energy that doesn't get nearly as much attention as the likes of solar and wind, but it has huge potential in certain locations. Many people are quick to draw comparisons between tidal energy and nuclear power as extremely cost-effective, non-intermittent sources of fossil-free energy. Tidal barrage systems also have some of the longest lifespans of any kind of energy infrastructure. But that also raises some questions. As of yet, the UK has nine operational nuclear reactors across five sites, but not a single tidal range plant. And despite the UK being quoted as one of the best positioned countries in the world to exploit tidal energy, the power source is hardly mentioned in the UK government's energy resource planning literature. So why has it taken this long for projects like Mersey Tidal to start gaining traction? And after 50 years of pretty much stagnant development, is there really a future for this kind of energy source? Tidal range projects like the ones in Liverpool operate using the potential energy caused by a difference in water level between high and low tide. Whilst I've mentioned these kind of systems have seen very little implementation, there's actually another kind of tidal energy that's been getting a lot more attention recently, and that's tidal stream. 600 kilometres north of Liverpool on the Orkney Islands are the headquarters of Orbital Marine Power, who are the producers of the world's most powerful stream turbine. Tidal stream energy harnesses kinetic energy directly from the tide as it flows in and out. As to how this energy is harnessed, there are many different design approaches being trialled at the moment, ranging from vertical and horizontal axis ocean floor turbines to underwater kites and oscillating hydrofoils. At 2 MW per unit, Orbital's floating units are comparable in output to your average onshore wind turbine, but with the added benefit of producing predictable power with the constant tidal patterns. But there are some drawbacks to these kind of projects too. Just like offshore wind turbines, they're hard to access for maintenance, and they're often limited to deeper waters where they won't be affected by the ships above or the seafloor below. There's a reason schemes like these are being favoured at the moment though, and that's because they're small and scalable, requiring a small upfront cost. Simply put, investment in this kind of tidal energy is a smaller risk for governments and investors, especially since it remains a technology that, compared with other renewables, is still very much in its baby stages. What makes the River Mersey scheme interesting then is that, like the La Rance project in France, it operates using a tidal barrage system. Typically schemes like these involve constructing what is essentially a large dam across a tidal river bay, and so they demand a significant upfront investment. The operating principle is fairly simple and operates much like a hydroelectric dam would, except in both directions. As a tide rises on the outside of the barrage, water is allowed to flow into the enclosed body of water through a number of gates. When the tide starts to go out again, these gates are closed, causing a height difference to build up on either side of the dam, and so when the gates are opened, the difference in static pressure on either side of the turbines causes water to be forced through them at high speed, generating huge amounts of power in the process. 
The Mersey Tidal project plans to connect Liverpool and the borough of Wirral with a barrage that will be accessible to both pedestrians and cyclists. The proposed plan includes 28 turbines rated at 25 megawatts each, yielding the total power output of around 700 megawatts. That's an output similar in size to your average gas-fired power plant, and it's hoped that the project would help Liverpool as a city reach its goal of net zero by 2040. The system can also generate energy either bidirectionally, as shown in this animation, or restrict generation to one direction only, allowing the tides to come in more rapidly. You might at this point be asking yourself, given tidal range has faced such inertia globally over its implementation, what is it then that's made the stars finally align over this particular project? Well, there are a number of reasons which we'll dive into right now. First of all, this project has this Goldilocks combination, if you like, of resource and location. There aren't many places in the world that have such a large difference in tide heights whilst also being positioned near an urban centre with such a high population density. Made possible by the UK government's devolution scheme, the fact that this project's publicly funded also means it's more likely to be able to deliver cheaper energy to the end consumer. Another nice co-benefit of this undertaking is that the barrage doubles up as flood protection, which is probably more important than you might think, given predictions have the River Mersey rising by over a metre over the next century. Now as I've mentioned, tidal energy draws a lot more similarities with nuclear than it does with other renewable sources like solar or wind. Like nuclear, it relies on high initial infrastructure investments in return for a long lifespan of dependable, cheap and relatively clean energy. It wasn't until researching this video though that it struck me just how cheap this source of energy could be. According to Cardiff University professor Roger Falconer in a piece written by the new civil engineer, Tidal range projects like these can have a significantly lower cost per kilowatt hour than nuclear and will outlive a nuclear plant twice over. The table from this article compares a proposed tidal lagoon scheme with the UK's next nuclear plant in Somerset, with the former predicted to work out significantly cheaper should it be pursued. A lot of these cost savings come from the longevity that tidal range schemes can offer. As shown in this graphic from the Mersey Project brochure, the infrastructure laid down will last well over 100 years, and it absolutely dwarfs the other renewable energy sources on this metric. Despite all these benefits though, there is one inevitable drawback, and that's the environmental impacts. Amongst all the different types of renewable energy sources, tidal energy of this kind is probably the most disruptive to the surrounding area. And it's not just the altering of water levels and the restriction of fish movement that would typically attribute to hydroelectric power plants, for example. The separation of river estuaries from the ocean can have noticeable effects on the salinity of the water and can lead to the eradication of some species in the area entirely. In the La Rance estuary of France, which I mentioned earlier, higher levels of silt have actually caused native plants to suffocate and fish-like place to become extinct in those waters. It has also benefited some species like cuttlefish that actually prefer those conditions, and so the scheme has completely altered the environment that once existed there. Another problem with tidal range as opposed to tidal stream is that the systems have high turbine speeds due to the concentrated water flows, which increases the likelihood of harming sea life. Now there are some ways to minimise these impacts like constructing tidal range schemes across lagoons and bays as opposed to river estuaries and using natural materials, but at the end of the day these are all just compromises and the root cause is one that's near on impossible to eradicate. British estuaries are amongst the highest protected natural areas and this is likely the reason other renewable investments have been favoured by governments up to now. As I said, the River Mersey project is yet to submit a scoping opinion, and this itself is only the first stage in obtaining a development consent order. Should this all go through, the building work isn't expected to start until around 2026 or 2027, and it would take five plus years after that to finish construction. If the project succeeds though, it could be hugely instrumental in paving the way for other projects to follow. There are currently numerous already well-developed plans for tidal projects across the west coast of the UK, which together could sum up to around 10 gigawatts of energy. 
There's estimated to be a further 10 plus gigawatts of resource available, which overall would be enough to supply 12% of the UK's current electricity demand. So, given half of Europe's energy resource is found in Britain, is it finally time for the country to start turning the tide on tidal? Or will the environmental consequences stand in the way? Ultimately, it again comes down to the question that so often appears in renewable energy developments. To what extent should we allow ourselves to harm local environments in the interest of the greater good of the planet? What do you think? Drop your opinions in the comments below. As always, I'm Luke, and this was The Upshift.